Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sammy with another Let's Talk movie video. So today we're going to be talking about the 2021 movie The Night House. This movie really had me thinking. Not really so had me thinking, but it was one of those movies that the ending was just a bit mind blowing. So if you have not watched that movie, I recommend that you pause my video, go watch the movie, and come back here because my video will be filled with a lot of spoilers. So let's begin. We're introduced to Beth. She's our main character. She's coming home from her funeral, from a funeral, right? We see her talking to this lady. I'm guessing she wasn't important. Maybe, maybe a family member, because it doesn't seem as if um, she and her family member were close. Anyway, she come, she comes home and she's there. You know, sad drinking she has this letter walking around with angrily she you know he keeps throwing it on the table touching it so i'm guessing it's very it's somebody very close to her who had died and we never really figured out who died until like we saw her on the couch just looking back at her wedding videos and that's when i figured like oh shit her husband was the one who had died so Beth's there laying down in bed and there was this knock on the door she got up because she was shocked. This was like in the middle of the night and she just got up and searched. When she went down there, there was nobody there. But we the audience saw like this dark silhouette in the in the glass. Which was a bit weird but this is a horror movie so I'm guessing you know there's going to be some spooky shit right. Next day no Beth woke up and you know she's on her way to work when she heard the squeaky fence up and kept licking the wall and the board fence right because they live on this lake house really pretty place a lot of forest you know um as far as i can see they only had like one neighbor so she went there and when she went to fix the the fence the gate there she saw somebody footprints so she followed it and it showed that it was leading out of the lake so while she was there, she heard a gunshot that shocked her and she looked around, you know, to see what, I guess, she thought, I assume, because it's a forest, you know, there probably be a lot of hunting there. So she just left either way. So when she showed up at the school, she was obviously late because it was, it seemed as if it was like a teacher conference going on. So when she come in, there was a lot of whisper, whispering, and I was like, what is this all about? You know, maybe it's one of those, um places where the, the co-workers talk each other a lot so I just because that's like everywhere she went in and she sat beside her best friend Claire Claire is really a cool girl and you'll see why I like Claire so at her deck snow right um Beth is there you know looking for houses because obviously you and your husband been living in this house for years and he passed away so you're not going to want to be there anymore. And it's just too many memories. And she does off, right? And she does off. So when she woke up, um, she woke up by a parent coming in knocking on the door. And I said she woke up. When she woke up, there was the, there was guns. You know, you're searching for guns on a website. That's what she was on. So we're obviously seeing that she's losing track of time and she's doing stuff that you know she wasn't doing before so obviously what is she doing while she's um zoning out basically so anyways this parent coming this lady is such a bitch and she's the reason why most kids nowadays feel like they, they can get away with a lot of stuff because they will always have that shitty ass parent to back their wrongdoing right so she comes in and with attitude saying that um, her child got a C. He said that you told him he could make that up? I did. Yeah, he, uh, he didn't. <laughs> he said he came in last Thursday. That was the last day of school. He said that you weren't here? Yes, I was out for a few days. It was a, a personal matter. Well, he told me he was out the day you presented those projects. We all have personal matters to deal with sometimes. Okay, uh... So Bet was like, you know what? What do you want? You want me to change it to a B? You want me to change it to a B? Just, okay, just stay and I'll change it to a B, right? She's like, no, 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 that's not what I want. So Bet like, you know what? You know what? You want to know why I was out? 
my husband took the boat out onto the lake and shot itself in the mouth. That's why I was out. You just said it like you could see the look on her face. She was shocked. She said, Oh, I didn't know. I didn't know. And Beth was like, Yeah, because it's a personal matter. Because you're there talking about your stupid ass son who didn't complete his assignment because he feel like the world revolves around him, right? And you know, she was just being really insensitive. Yeah, I get you don't know, but you don't even say, Make you tackle your child. He was one who didn't complete the assignment. Anyways. So Beth said, you know what, you want me to just change it to an A, change it to an A, because it really don't matter. Like, I have so much stuff going on in my life, I could care less about your son and his grade right now. You want an A? And she was like, I guess, feeling like, she's like, no, a B will be fine. And stand up all, you know, like, she gives a shit, like, oh, I'm so sorry. Um, condolences, and whatever, whatever. And you can see the most annoyed look on Beth's face, like, as she left, she, cause she had a picture of her and her, of her and her husband together, and she just grabbed it up and just threw it in the drawer. Like she definitely reached that stage of anger, which rightfully so, cause I'm like they've been they had been married for fourteen years, and I that could not be easy, you know. But then I realized, like on the first part when she went to go and. And she saw the footprints. There was the boat there. And I'm like, something crazy like that happens. And you still keep the boat? I don't know. I don't think I'd want that to be there. That's just something I would want there. Yeah, because even when she went home, you know, because she went back to where she saw the footprints. And then there was Mel, the neighbor, a really sweet old guy. And he said that there was a storm coming and he was just covering the boat. And him even asked her, you want me to get rid of it for you? And she was like, no, she probably just sell it with the house. And he's like, you really going to sell the house? And she's like, yeah, she's, she's thinking about it, even though he was the one who built the house from scratch. You see that Beth was really angry. She's removing all of his stuff from out of the closet. She's taking down picture frames, all of his shaving stuff, his shampoos and toothbrushes and stuff, and just boxing them away. And then that's when she found like the sketchbook that she got where he did the plan of their house, right? You know, because he's very, he's like one of those handy guys. Yeah, so she's going through the books, looking at, you know, the plan and stuff. She's seen stuff like, you know, our house, confusing um, word plan, trick it, and stuff like that. And you know, it's, it was a bit confusing at first. But you'll figure out why all of those were placed there, right? Because there was even like a reverse floor plan to how her house stay. And you know, like, oh, her house would be like this shape. It is basically flipped on the next page. Keep that in mind, okay? Because it's like very, it's like a key role to, to understand in this movie. So it may, I'm not going to lie, it's going to get confusing. Because I had to watch, I watched this movie three times. One, the first time I did not understand what was going on, but I was actually distracted because I was like, Come here, my little brother's here, so I wasn't really focusing. The second time, no, it definitely clicked. You know, the third time I had to like just to jot down my notes. But this movie, it really is really a great movie, I'm not going to lie. But knowing bed, right? And she woke up like this at the 5 33 in the morning, the radio just started blaring for no reason at all which obviously got finer out of her sleep she jumped up and she looked on her phone and there was a text from owen owen is the husband the text said to come here so she responded you know either she's frightened she texts back like who is this and like the person keeps telling her that it's okay like just come here and she called the phone and like there was a bit of a muffled but then you could hear him clearly said come to the window and when she did there was owen butt naked like standing at the lake right so um the next so beth immediately wakes up the next day but she was laying on the bathroom floor because remember you're not telling her we're kind of seeing like where she's losing time so we're not knowing what's happening like after she saw him we just know that she woke up the next day on the bathroom floor and the door was locked 
So what happened between that time frame, we, don't, we do not know, right? So immediately she went to check her phone to see if the text message were really there, if it was just a dream. So she checks the messages and it was just the same when she messaged him that last time that I miss you thing. So there was nothing there. So she ran to the car to check his phone to see, you know, if anything was there. Nothing was there either. But she ended up going through his phone and phone up some pictures. A picture specifically with a girl that looked that she thought was her at first, but then like, you know, we closed the inspection. She saw that it wasn't her because she doesn't own that type of blows. So she went to school to work and she showed her friend the picture and her friend was like, no, that's you. She's like, no, 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 that's not me. Take a closer look. And she's like, yes, it's you. She's like, no, I don't own a blouse like that. Her friend um, sometimes says stuff, say stuff that was a bit insensitive, but she immediately, like, as she catch on that it was rude, she quickly apologized. And she's like, why were you going through his phone anyway? And then she's like, oh, shit. Yeah, you can have all rights. Your husband passed. Of course, you know, you're going to go through those the stuff to kind of get, like, memories of him. Anyways, the friend invited her out with, like, a couple more of the colleagues to go out and get some drinks. A change of atmosphere. So, we're there now at the, the drink cup, right? And these other two colleagues, there were, like, four of them in total. This other guy and this black girl. The black girl, I could not and they made her character so rude and insensitive and I just wanted to just smack her to the damn the damn phone. So Beth is there and they're talking and whatever and Beth just you know randomly showed do you guys believe in ghosts? And they were all looking at her all crazy. Her friend, you know, trying to, you know, show support. She's like, Yeah, I, I believe in ghosts. You could say like you did she didn't, but Beth was like yeah, I think, you know, I am seeing stuff. And the black, the one black girl that was there, I don't know why I would think she of all person would kind of understand. I don't know, maybe, I keep, I, you know, I realize you can't box every black person into the same box. But I don't know, growing up in a Jamaican also, you are taught about um, ghosts, you know. We have the whole Obia thing, so there's spirit, there's dark evil, and I don't know, I feel like every black person should, are you know, experience something like this. So for her to jump up and be like, there's no such thing, it just kind of did piss me off. Uh, Perry, that was just a little bit of pet peeve, and she just didn't seem like a black character to me, which was just irritating. Like, basically, the day I just made that character white because. She just wasn't doing it for me. And they kept asking stuff and it was just like, I get that you're curious, but there's like a time and place for everything. Like, you know, maybe you asked her a couple months or a couple of years after, but you don't ask her like within, you know, it was just too much. And they asked her, so you didn't know? Did they use his signs? Like, no, you don't ask somebody that. Did he leave a note? Okay. I'm sorry. She no, wants to talk about I it. I think we're done with this conversation. He did. Beth. <laughs> I keep it in your purse. So Beth, after nobody never tried to reach for it, obviously, she took it up and she read it for them. You were right. There is nothing. Nothing is after you. You're safe now. So everybody was like, that's it? So she's like, yeah, that's it. No XOXO, no love your husband, whatever. This was it. So they were like, what does it mean? And she's like, yeah, I have no, I have no freaking idea. And you know, she kind of started to get really heated and, you know, and her friend worried was like, you know what, yeah, let's, let's just go home and just rush Beth's out of there. No, um, they're home, um, Claire and Beth, and she's there talking to her, you know, Beth was laying on her, her lap 
and she was like, um, I honestly, I knew what the letter meant. She confided in her that when she was like 17 years old, she met in a car accident where she was dead for basically four minutes. And that during that time when she, you know, in that state, that death, that death zone, I would say, she there was like nothing there you know usually they always say that when you die there was like there was always this like light of the end of the tunnel and she was like no there was just complete darkness that surrounded her there was nothingness and that's kind of like a scary thought to know that when you die you know there's just this empty void there was just nothing there was nothing there's just pitch blackness the friend offered to stay and Bet was like, no, you have your, you have your family and your kids, go home to them. It's fine. I'll be fine. And that's when Bet falls asleep. Just to be woken up by loud noise, the place shaking, the radio jeering, like really loud, like everything shaking. And immediately, she, you know, she got up scared, panicking, and then it just switched off completely. Girl. <laughs> You need to leave that house. Why would you keep... Why would you stay there? So, you know, frantically, she ran outside, you know, like, shouting, like, who the hell is it? Like, what is up with you? Show yourself, you know? And she keeps... That's kind of... That kind of annoyed me. It wasn't really annoyed, but it's like a little pet peeve. I don't know if it's probably a black thing. You do know. You don't... When you're dealing with spirits, why are you communicating with them? She kept calling out to them, asking for them to show themselves and shit like that. And that was like, that was just kind of just irking me. And I'm like, girl, stop. Stop communicating with these things. This thing, whatever it is, stop communicating. Stop telling you to show yourself. But yeah, I get she thought that it was her husband. Which, oh, I swear, if that black girl was really black, you know, she could have come through, you know, telling her whatever, but back to the movie. So Claire is outside and these two girls, these two women just ran past her and then just climb over like the fence and just jumped in the lake and Beth was like shocked, like what the frig is going on. At the same time, another, another girl ran past her and she's there chasing her, trying like calling her, trying she just jumped over the fence again into the lake you know like after she saw them jump jumping over you know she saw this house like directly in front of her house like across the lake and there was light and then there comes the voice you know in her hair is like boat like go to the boat so when she goes to that same boat that her husband had committed you know suicide in um there was blood like it was still covered in blood that obviously that's she's seen stuff now and she was like mm -mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm, I, I can't do this and she turned back right but then she ended up seeing like bloody footprints there and she thought it was her husband again and she kept telling she like Owen oh, if it's you show me and then you keep saw the footprint standing directly in front of her and she reached out and he touched her and then so she was awake and when the boat you know touched the other side of the lake and then that's when she went you know she go explore because she's very curious to why this house is there and that's looking at the window looking up at the window that's when she saw owen with another lady we saw him we saw him kissing her and then like him grabbed her and she pushed him and then he looked all this dry you know covering his face and then we saw when he followed her so she there you know walked around to the house to the door because what the frig right and she took up the key because she obviously I tell you it's like an exact replica of her house but there we see like the numbers were in reverse you know they were flipped the other way so she she took up the key so she opened the door and there she was laying on the couch and that's when she woke up from the couch 
with the door open and she run and got up and closed the door so you, you see what i'm saying it gets it gets a bit confusing but it, everything will clear up as you go through the movie just just stay with it you know you know beth is very curious like what the hell is going on and she gets up on the computer and she search for the picture that she found on his phone and tracked it down to another file where other photos where she saw what the girl really looked like and i'm telling you this dude has a freaking type right not only was that one girl there that was you know in the, the different bows that the friend thought was her there was other females and they all have a similar look to beth and i started to think like i'm not even cutting the movie but this i'm going to fill you guys with a lot of stuff that i was thinking throughout the movie so she was there so while i saw that i and i remember seeing the other girls that ran past you know all of them had the black hair and stuff and i'm like i thought that okay maybe the house was built on a sacred land right maybe while building he unleashed something because ben did say to her friends that um Owen didn't start to have sleepwalking until like one year, one to two years after building the house. So I'm thinking, all right, um, Owen built a house on a sacred land and he unleashed something evil and he is trying to, you know, give it sacrifices basically. And that those were the women. Then, all right, okay, that kind of is so stupid. So, um, after Talena, she found the picture, she started to walk around to find, you know, she started to walk around, see if she can locate the house that she saw in her dreams, right? And she did, she did find the house, it was there, but it was still like in the building stage. It still had the, the outline was all there like the foundation and stuff but inside was still a work in progress right there was still like sheets and stuff there the the foundation like the basically the the board to go up was still there in this like silver um case thingy not case like jar basically yeah, like a jar she pushed her hand in there but never girl why would you take that oh you i would not even touch that with a stick right and you know she brought it with her she took that up and brought it with her because even before she went there she, she had booked up in mail and asked him if he did see a house and he's like no he never did say oh she's pissed no right so she stormed back over to 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 mel's house that's the little old guy house and asked him like Oh, you never tell me that there was a house. Why were you lying to me? And he's like, I did not know that there was a house. The thing is, I saw just like you, your husband, you know, walking around the whole walking around the lake. And there was this one time that I saw him with a woman that I thought was you, but when she turned around, I realized it wasn't you. And he was like, Why you never tell me? And he's like because well first of all the man of man in, in one business that's none of my business so he's like because he told me to he came back to me in the night covered in mud um smelling like alcohol saying that you know he has urges and he's trying so hard to control them so she was like what kind of urges and the guy's like would you uh, forgive me for not asking and i'm like again do you not see the type of guy that this man is he's not going to ask that's none of our business that's not my business i'm not going to ask and he's like after that night he has never seen him done anything that was weird again so he assumed everything has been fixed and she um hinting at the you know him taking his life of taking his life like yeah it wasn't it obviously wasn't fixed and he was like I'm guess I guess I'm getting that you're hurt, but you cannot you can't be doing this. You're trying to fill the hole with something and you're filling it with evil. Try to let it go. You know, try to move on. Which was right, cause and he, and then him keep reminding like she's definitely 
in that stage between life and death. She's closer to death. That's what he told her. She was closer to death. And she needed to be careful. This, it reminds me. When you said that, it reminds me of this show I, I had watched with this blind priest, right? It was a black show. And he, this priest was not black. He was white. And he had lost his son. And he kept praying, kept praying, kept praying because he was grieving miserably. And he was praying that he wanted a son, he wanted a son. God give him a son, give him a son, and he never had to get a son. Anyways, he founded a kid that was abandoned, you know, starving. Um, out of nowhere too, you know, which part of me find the kid was so damn strange. I don't know it never clicked to him. But it turned out that that kid was actually the devil. You know, he came in the form of a thing that you know that the man wanted and make him ruin him community and put all sort of stuff in the man's ears and then he must feed it to the people because he's like the leader and I think what ended up happening was like the old town ended up burning down so all of those people's souls and life went to the devil <laughs> so you know Beth is now in investigation mode, right? So she's pissed. She wants to find out what the hell is going on. And she found a book. Um, it's this word. I swear I googled it, you know, and I practiced the word and I don't remember. But she found a book with this name on it. So she opened the book and then she found some pages where he highlighted some stuff. Like trickery and stuff like that. And then, you know, we saw the picture of the sculpture that she had found. Like, okay, I'm going to put something on the screen that I want you to read that was a part of the book. Look um, specifically at the highlighted section. And um, again, she's still walking around with this statue, right? She brought this thing into her house, right? So it's there. And we see what the book's basically talking about, you know, tricking tricking the spirits um with basically mazes and sacrifices that's basically what the books really read um spoke about she found some other books and she saw where it was bought and that's how she figured out where the bookstore was so even while she was there investigating there was like sounds upstairs like stuff shuffling and she went up there and you know this happened <laughs> We're at this point we still think it's Owen is really showing of himself right it's crazy it's obsessed with. so no but shows up at the bookstore right this is like one of my favorite scenes she showed up at the bookstore and she's talking to the um the cashier and he was like really you know he wasn't really paying attention to her because she's asking him about the books he's like you know hold on hold on like he's checking something not paying attention to her at all um, but she glimpsed over and that's when she saw the girl that looked, that's from the pictures, right, that looked similar to her. And she walked away though and then she went to introduce herself. She's like, hi, I'm Beth. And the girl, you know, kind of hesitant, but that's where she worked. And she told her name and she's like, um, do you know my husband? And the girl's like, no. So Beth called his name and that's when it clicked to her, like, yeah, this is the, the lady's husband that I was having an affair with and she immediately <clears throat> there are pictures of you on his phone Jonah it's all right you don't have to call for help I'm not gonna <laughs> girl she was so scared I swear and she's so tiny too you know so I'm like if Beth wanted to you know knock their teeth out she probably could but um Beth told her like all of that's been squashed, like you knew everything was started out, he's dead and the girl's like, what? She's like, yeah, he off this stuff and you know, but with her dark humor, she was like, Psh! <coughs> he did that. 
and then she admitted Beth that she did not sleep with him. So Beth left there and she went back to Claire and telling her what had happened. And Claire was like, Do you believe her? Um and Beth was like that she didn't sleep with him. Like, yeah, but it would have made more sense if he did. So if he wasn't sleeping with her, what was he doing? She didn't say it in that nice way. She used F1. <laughs> And she was like, she was not the only girl either. Like, there's other girls there. They all had a similarity to me. Like, obviously, I am his type. But if he's not sleeping with them, what was he doing, right? And then brings me to my next theory. Her husband, Owen, wanted to kill her, right? And he could not go through with it. And he found women that looked exactly like his wife and of them instead because him couldn't bring himself to hurt his wife but he goes around and find women that looks like her and then i am thinking to myself how does this dude find so much woman because there were so many pictures of um different women in the phone where did he find all of them how far was he going to find women that looks like his wife like how far was this dude a serial killer like some stuff that was going through my mind i was like who was Owen? What was this guy doing? Was he like a look at Ted Bundy? During all of that, anyway, there was a knock on the door and then the girl from the bookstore showed up. I did not remember her name. Did I even say her name? It doesn't matter. But anyways, she was there and Beth asked her like, how do you know where I live? And she was like, she has been there. And I'm like, this freaking son of a bitch. You are not only cheating, but you've been bringing these women to the house, right? Anyways, Bet brought her in and they were talking and she, again, she confirmed she did not sleep with her husband. She was like, he came in for basically a year. I think she said for a year or over a year, he came in by a couple books. They flirted a bit and then that's when he started to show more frequently. She liked him. He seemed really cool. And she admitted that, yeah, she thought that they were going to sleep together um she came to the house he was sweet they kissed they touched and basically stuff like that and he showed her the link and that's when he showed her the second house that he was building and beth was up in her feelings because again her husband never shared this side of him with her but asked her like tell me what happened she was like he showed her the second house and he like he busted his head on her shoulder and he started crying and she not knowing what to do kissed him right and that's when he grabbed her by the throat and started choking and Beth was like shocked she was like oh my god did he hurt you and she's like no 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 she's very she's she has a very docile personality and she in her head she did not see the danger that was happening she just thought it was like some form of um foreplay she thought that that was his kink but no girl he was trying to kill you so she was like no he stopped it didn't hurt me he stopped after i had asked him to and he was crying and he brought her home oh and he kept saying stuff like it's not working anymore it's not him he knows what to do and stuff like that and she assumed like and then she was like he really feel remorseful about cheating on you and so Beth was like what she's like yeah that's what he meant right it wasn't working out between you that's what all of that rambling was about but no girl we the audience knew better that that wasn't what it was all about right so the girl left and um Beth pissed no she's very angry more likely a bit tipsy because she's been drinking so she ran out in the rain and go back to the second house and started screaming like oh so you shared it with her but you couldn't share this with me and blah 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 and she kept tumbling around and her foot went through one of those the board the wooden board and that's when my girl Beth found the bodies under the house there was like I saw about three three bodies under the ground and she ran she started running like what the fuck is going on like who was this man that i was married to for 
14 almost 15 years and what i have realized which is so weird no police was called i don't even know if those bodies were removed but did not call the police like i legit just found bodies in the second house across the lake that my husband was building there's female there's women bodies under the house why are you not contacting the police those poor girls died so tragically and then they won't even get a proper funeral because they don't think Beth called because in her eyes she still sees her husband as the good person which was irritating because even throughout the end she still sees her husband in a good light like no girl he murdered woman we don't even know how much bodies were there like i said i think i saw about three or four anyways but ran in and she called she took up her phone and called claire but she didn't get her and she left a voicemail saying we're right i'm sorry that i dig blah 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 you think after seeing all of that she would have just stepped off with that host and ran but no beth doing the most weirdest thing ever as usual she went to take a shower right and while showering <laughs> the radio came on again Ugh, and it's always that one damn song i'm guessing that was their song so she came out to the show bawling shouting owen come back to me come back to me like just show yourself to me all of that extraneous bawling on the place and then when she looked up on the mirror there was hair written on the bathroom mirror all foggy was just written there and she go over and she you know she wipes it clear and she was there looking right and then she heard the sound of water dropping you know when you know you have clothes you hang up clothes and the water dripping on the girl that's the sound <laughs> that's the only way i could describe it and water dripping on the ground so she turned around she looked at the door and she obviously said okay this is oh and he's standing right in front of me and she like she invited him to come close to her no no lie she went towards him and she reached out her hand and touched him and like you saw like you know when you touch something in your hand kind of that was the contour thing going started going on and then there she embraces him right and he's there touching her and there the next thing and ugh, she's there i almost thought that they were going to just do it like she was just going to start bringing her ghost husband when he embraced her on the the kitchen um cabinet the kitchen counter thing and him turn her like him flip her around to face the glass and you know keep, kept touching her and she's like owen owen they're making out with a a demon <laughs> that ain't Owen girl she's there having this thing touch her or feel her or it's not your husband and this is what everybody was warning you about you keep doing it like hope oh my freaking god kind of annoying because I low-key wanted to see like what the thing was like if it was like a disgusting looking creature or not whenever I really see an image it was just always this dark silhouette so she know she know trying to leave right and the thing slammed the door in front of her so obviously she's no panicking because what the hell am i in the room with right and then when she turned on and looked in the mirror there was another woman looking back at her and she sees like the lady was like frantic and there comes owen because she's in everything right Stay with me guys, stay with me. She's there and Owen comes in with a woman and he held her by the neck and like banged her head in the glass, like breaking the glass a couple of times. She wasn't dead yet, so Owen kept doing it again and she was like, No, Owen, you can't do this. Like, girl, you don't want to admit it? Your man's a freaking killer. He's sick in the head. I don't care what reason he had to do this, he's sick. So, 
the thing like it brought her up to the mirror and like choked her out and slammed her head in the mirror so it's like she passed through that plane you get what i'm saying like as you banged her head like it's like she went over to that side and she was seen maybe i'm guessing after she banged her head she basically passed out but no i am thinking that she went over to the realm of the dead because she's not seen what happened to those to those women right and she's there going through room and every room she passes there was a woman with another woman killing another woman and he was just there and even and like even when he was like killing them there was this dark force that empty silhouette thing just standing there just looking just watching right so so by now um she was there and he was pulling her on the door at the door like thing the door frame he was pulling her and she grabbed onto the, the door frame and like then she locked eye with owen while he was there um bawling his eyes out about some shit after him just killed a woman and she called though to him and then again she has this remorseful look and this remorseful tone and i'm like how are you not mad that your husband is killing these women like all you care about is seeing your damn husband your damn murderer husband she kind of made me kind of you know she kind of pissed me off with this own thing but yes i guess yes i guess it, it was her husband but this man is a monster anyways the thing pulled her down like flung her ass down the stairs and brought her to the fireplace where owen well obviously where owen sat right and when she looked it was actually her laying down in owen's lap and he was there caressing her and she's like who are you right who the hell are you? you're not my husband he's like you're right so no she asked like who the hell are you and he was like you do not remember me you were taken away from me and then he was like remember what happened back in the past the car accident when you were dead i was there with you i am that nothingness that was there so basically so when she was dead for that four minutes she was in like that plane of you know life and death this thing lashed itself onto her he's been whispering stuff into owen's head like trying to get her get him to give her back so basically telling owen to kill his wife beth so that him it to this black darkness could get her and then owen decides that no him not give up his wife is his idea was like okay instead of let me get in help to try to keep my wife out of that depressing state or get help for myself to you know keep me sane i'm going to get a book research about voodoo and all these stuff and how to create a replica of my house to try to confuse the the thing create a weird ass statue and sacrifice woman that looks exactly like my wife um obviously the spirit was falling on her own so he had to you know make it seem as if those women were his wife so which is why he brought them to the house and stuff like that my theory and so yeah those women were sacrifices he didn't want to let go of his wife but he didn't have an issue killing other women to save his wife no it's not a love story this man is sick this man is sick i don't um yeah you can say the women were at fault too because he was a married man but still he was wrong on so many levels i don't care how much you love your wife what he did was disgusting and i hope he's rotted in hell like i hope that darkness thingy has his soul she still didn't feel angry she still felt as if she still seemed as if she was okay with the fact that Owen did all of this for her because she was like, oh, so he tricked you. And, he, and the thingy, the darkness thing admitted that, yeah, he did. He tricked me for a while. But obviously, he was smarter than that. And that's why Owen kept having to kill more and more women because, yeah, he did it for a while and he fooled it for a while, but it kept coming back. So that's what happened. And then it's like the thing told her like you were dreaming and she woke up 
and then when she woke up she was actually in the arms of the darkness thing remember I tell you, you know, she is in that plane of life and like i think she's directly in the middle of life and death and the reason why i said is that we see her like we know that she's in this plane because we're seeing two moons we see like the red moon and the normal moon which is why i again say i think she's in that life and death situation she's like exactly in the middle and depending on what she does will you know depends on where she goes so it's all up to her it was the next day claire came and just by the look around the look of the house she know that something was wrong and even noticing that the gun because she got back the gun that her husband used to off himself and she was like oh shit she started screaming out bet bet where are you she looked through the window that's where she saw that bet was on in the same boat and she was just slumped over like i'm telling you she's in a trance she's just in that space where it's either i'm going to die and go with the spirit or i am going to choose life right so beth is there and she's sitting on in the boat now right and there is the darkness thing but it's in the form of owen i am guessing this thing has taken it's more it's taken shape it's either it had taken the form of her husband knowing that it would be more easier to will her to do what he wants her to do or because um Owen took his life it's just easier to take his body I don't know I think it's either one or the other for me so it's there and he's sitting there with the gun in his hands it's, it's, it's naked and she asks it like where's Owen like where is he truly and he's like and he's like it is like I keep calling it a he it it is like he's gone and i'm sure you knew this like owen has been gone since he died he was never there with her this thing was just there um trying to push her put her like down there like get her so depressed make her think that you need me i am what you need you need to just end it all and just come to me and she was there holding the gun and she she has it close to her getting ready you know to shoot and her friend was there shouting at her because she could still hear off in the distance and then i'm guessing what happened was beth realized that yeah i'm going to have to start choosing life this is what i have to do in order to live because this thing cannot hurt me unless i allow it to right and then she did ended up um putting down the gun coming to the realization that yeah my husband is truly gone um but i am still here right and i have to push through if i want to live you know and she ended up putting down the gun and that's when her i swear claire is a real one claire dived off in that water and i can't swim <laughs> So I don't know if my friend was in that situation what I would have done. I'd probably still jump off in there knowing I can't swim. Try to save her and somebody that's gonna end up saving the toilet because I'd probably end up drowning. But Claire jumped in and she swam to the boat and pulled her over into the water. I'm like, girl, keep your head up and pushed her back to the shore. There was Mel because Mel heard all the commotion. He ran over to help pull her out of the water and he i know mel saw that dark figure sitting in the boat because he does see like the hint of that darkness there just wavering and they asked her like what it is what is it what's going on she was like it's nothing like yeah truly it's nothing so that was the movie right so that was the movie let's talk about it it's it's really it's not a bad movie i'm not going to it it really did had me thinking but again i didn't like the fact that the girls nothing came off the stories of the girl we didn't know if they got a burial or anything i wish the movie had ended there where we actually saw beth um visiting their gravesite you know just so just for that peace of mind um so definitely we figured out that this thing had latched on to her it feeded um her husband messages um how to you know that 
you need to off your wife and him so in love with your wife thought it was okay to hurt these females in order to you know as a sacrifice to try to treat this right oh and you're a walking red flag you're crazy you're crazy i don't care if you died in the end what you did was just disgusting yeah so that was the movie um in my rating i would definitely give this a four out of five stars really good watch really really good watch um yeah so that's it for the video thank you guys for staying with me until the end um let's talk about it in the comments below don't forget to like and subscribe and until next time bye guys